Welcome back to the series. Today, we have our second tech bite on the Elcos SLM with Kane. Kane, it's good to have you back. What are you here to talk about today? Yeah, it's great to be back and talking about the SLM again. Today, we can talk about how the technology works in a bit more detail than the previous tech bite. And we have this new system here, which will allow us to generate some holograms and see the SLM in action. Perfect. We're definitely looking forward to seeing that. So obviously this unit will have a laser inside and some additional optics, but the most important aspect will be the SLM itself. So I thought I would explain how that works in a bit more detail. That would be great. So how does the SLM work? Well, I always like to emphasize the name ELCOS, liquid crystal on silicon. Using some of the same technologies as liquid crystal displays in TVs or screens, but while in displays, the liquid crystals are used to control the light's relative brightness, we instead here use the mirror to get precise control of the light's phase. If we look at the structure here, we can see each component that makes up the system. So starting from the bottom, we have the silicon backplane and build in the pixel array, for our SLM, this is around 1300 by 1000 pixels. We then add on the mirror, either aluminium or dielectric, optimized for the laser wavelength being used. The aluminium mirrors are broadband and cover a wide range of wavelengths, whereas the dielectric mirrors are more narrow, but with near 100% reflectance for higher power lasers. Then, of course, comes the Elcos name. We add the liquid crystal layer on top of all that silicon, and I always think these crystals are shaped kind of like rice, very long and thin, and that will come into play for the operation. The liquid crystals have a property called birefringence, which for our purposes here, means their index of refraction or the speed of light through the crystals is different along the long and short axes. Along the long or thin end of the crystals, the speed of light is different depending on their alignment, and we then add a transparent electrode on top and a final glass covering. So that covers the structure of the SLM, but how do we use these liquid crystals to control the phase? Ah, well, by applying a voltage on the pixels, we can control the tilt of the crystals, and by changing that index of refraction, it means that in some pixels, the light will reflect an exit chip earlier, and in others, faster. So the end result is a precise way of controlling the phase of the reflected light. How do we use this to control the beam shape? We can control each pixel independently by displaying a computer-generated hologram on the SLM and use this to control the beam. These holograms typically look like a grayscale image with phase modulation ranging from 0 to 2 pi and can be generated in the software through an iterative Fourier transform of the output beam profile that we would like to produce. Great. Well, that explains how we can use the SLM. And for this demo unit, what other parts are included? Yeah, so obviously this is a bit more inside than just the SLM. We'll be using a visible laser, so it's easy to see, and an SLM with a relatively simple optical setup. Just a few lenses included and a high reflectance dielectric mirror. In this case, we're using a green laser diode and an SLM optimized for that wavelength, but we have many different models available covering the visible wavelengths all the way down to 15, 50 nanometers. So I've got a couple good examples loaded up already, so let's put them into the SLM and show them. If we start with the unmodulated beam, as we are here, we just get a single laser spot. If I add in some holograms, we can see that the beam turns into these nice loops and we can adjust the speed it cycles through these two. The software for the SLM includes a few sample holograms for testing, but as you can see, it's very possible to customize for your own inputs, as I've done here. We are also keeping the speed quite slow for the purposes of demonstration and recording, but at full speed, you can run the SLM at a 60 hertz refresh or frame rate. Thanks, Kane. So if somebody wanted to discuss this further, what do you recommend? It's always great to talk about this technology with anyone that is interested in utilizing the SLM. So if you are interested, please get in touch with our website or phone and I would be keen to speak with you.